Hi everyone, today is May 18th, 2019, and this is the Duel Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger, and this week we have a very packed episode because Konami decided to release a lot of stuff at once. So basically, um, we have the new Red Eye Structure deck that first came out, so earlier in the week we have some new Red Eyes cards to kind of shake up the meta a bit, and... Um, we're going to talk about all those cards because Red Eyes was a pretty good archetype before with Red Eyes Zombie. This one incorporates some of those new cards with the old cards and, of course, some other cards that aren't part of the meta deck, but they did make a new subsection. These are the tunes, of course. So the tunes aren't bad either. They're, they've definitely beaten me quite a number of times on the ladder. So this is a very uh, important structure deck to talk about. And... The RPG is happening right now, so a few cards from the RPG. You get to get Tristan, of course, and a new Bakora skill. And on Monday, the new box Blazing Rose came out. This news came out late, uh, a couple days ago. And, you know, um, Black Rose Dragon's finally here, so we're going to see that card and see how that shakes up the meta. So a lot, there's a ton of stuff going on here. And, of course, Doug is here. Uh, later in the episode, he has a Dark Lord deck. That's his casual deck of the week. As for myself in Duel World this week, uh, I've been very busy, so I haven't played a ton, but I did um, get into the Red Eyes scene. Uh, being a Red Eyes zombie player, hitting King of Games that a few times, I, um, I definitely wanted to play Red Eyes. Um, the Blue Eyes and Neos decks were decks that I didn't have a base to. I can't really play Blue Eyes if I don't have a lot of the cards in the past to do it, so it didn't make much sense. But Red Eyes, I have, I have the insights, I have the spirits, all those things. So, um, and even the Wyverns, I had enough Wyverns to play. So, um, something I was familiar with and decided to do. I bought the first one with gems, and I only bought the second one with money. I didn't buy a third one yet, but we'll see how desperate I get there and what the meta shapes up to be. So I'm just playing this two. Uh, Two copy version of the core cards, and I guess sometimes I am winning, but sometimes I'm losing. I think I'm losing more than I'm winning, so it's not really a great position to be in. But I'm staying at my uh, Legend One rank, so there's no harm really in losing any win streaks or anything. So I'm just playing the deck, um, getting through some of the ranked victories, of course, to, to get my tickets and rewards and things like that. So. Uh, not much to report outside of that. I'm doing PvE events and things like that. But Red Eyes is a deck that's evolving, of course, and uh, new cards coming on Monday again. So the deck, the deck might not even stick. We don't even know, um, or it could get even better. So the deck, um, I am just checking out the King of Games decks on Duel Links Meta's website, seeing what people are doing with it, of course. Um, and there was a new version of the deck I was playing with uh, Champions Vigilance that seemed pretty cool. So. I'm going to try that out. In terms of esports this week, we have two tournaments to talk about. Duel Links Meta Weekly 72 and the Sem Cup number 2. The Duel Links Meta Sem, uh, Weekly 72. Uh, Red Eyes came to this tournament and did pretty well in the top 32 actually. So it's good to see that Red Eyes is not ev- not only you know King of Games worthy on uh, ranked, but it could do pretty well in the uh, tournament format because sometimes those things are a bit different. And... Um, Top four are pretty diverse. It's it's a few different decks. No six samurais, of course. Top deck first place Phenom AR. I'm not sure if this is a Phenom from Hearthstone, but uh, same name. Sealed Tombs Blue Eyes White Dragon deck. Uh, there's a lot of control elements here, and this is kind of a new build. Uh, we we saw we're gonna see a deck from the Sem Cup that won, and it looks similar to this. But there's a lot of uh, consistency here. Three Seer Kribos, three. White Stone of Ancients, three Cosmo Brains, three Blue Eyes, two Dragon Spirit of White, two Dawn Knight, Silver's Cry, Burst Dream of Destruction, Econ, and Treacherous. So Burst Dream of Destruction is the new card. It's not a new card, but it's a card that people are using now in tournament formats. And basically you get to wipe your opponent's board if you control Blue Eyes. You can't attack though, so it's a control card. It clears the opponent's board. Uh, I think the deck later that we'll see runs more than one copy, but this one only runs one. Second place, Serenity, Light, and Dark Spellbooks. This is a spellbook deck. Uh, you've got Silent Spellbooks, so the typical cards there. 
a lot of the spell book cards, the Silent Magicians, Cosmic Cyclones, and then you've got three Dark Monsters. Uh, of course, with Light and Dark, you kind of swap out the Dark and the Light. So with the Silent Magician level 4, you've got Breaker the Magical Warrior, Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer, and Magical Something. So Magical Something and Breaker are cards that have uh, counter synergy, I believe. So those make sense. And Kaiku is just, you know, a, ba- a good banish card that can banish stuff from the graveyard, which is a pretty good ability, too. In Light and Dark, uh, I think spell books and masked heroes and silent things are kind of taking the lead, but of course um, Light and Dark plays around with Light and Dark archetypes of any card, as long as they're the same level and type, so you could kind of mix and match at a lot of things. Third place, Yose, Lock, Destiny, Draw, Buster, Blader, Red Eyes. So, Red Eyes made a splash here, being combined with Buster Blader, and that makes a lot of sense, actually, because they're all dragons. So, it makes, um, well, the Archfiend is a fiend, I guess, but um, it's, a hybrid, it's a hybrid deck that has equal parts of both. This one only runs two Red Eyes Fusion, because it is such a hybrid deck, typically you'll run three. Um, you know, I'd play this deck if I had the cards, of course. I don't have the Whelps, Buster Whelps of Destruction. So, um... This is this 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 seems like a really good deck. Um, it's gonna be the monsters gonna be even stronger with your uh, dragon cards, of course. And third place, C Perozo f- O five Destiny Draw Steel Swarm Neos. This is the it seems to be a better tournament version of the deck, the Steel Swarm deck, and it's basically a lot of cards from Neos Fusion. Uh, full complement of Sazanx, your three Sazanx, three Sphere Karibos, but you've got your two Steel Swarm Gear Stag and one Steel Swarm Scout. So those are your cards that send things to the graveyard for removal. Of course, the, this was the old counter to Six Samurais, but it's also pretty good against Neos too, because Neos has the Neos Fusion protection in the graveyard. And uh, you got full complement of Elemental Heroes in the extra deck to Fuse, The Shining, Brave Neos, of course, Gaia, Grand Merge, and Neos Knight. So, a bunch of cards there. Alright, so next tournament is Sem Cup 2, which happened in Taiwan, I believe. First place, Ryu. Ryo with Sealed Tombs, Blue Eyes. Um, and these decks were all pretty much the same. Three of the top four were Sealed Tombs, Blue Eyes. And this is the you know, Burst Stream of Destruction build, 22 card deck. A lot of control elements, of course. And this one has Snipe Hunter. So Snipe Hunter uh, is pretty good for throwing away the White Stone of Ancients. And then you could just you know hit stuff. Two Burst Stream of Destruction, two Treacherous Trap Hole. Second place, Red Stone Man, Sealed Tombs. Blue Eyes, a smaller version of the same deck. It's the exact same deck as the one above, except it cuts out... Or stream of destruction, so um, you know you still have your snipe hunters and treacherous here. Third place, raw middle age mechs, um, ancient gears is a full. It's a regular ancient gear deck, which means it runs magical hats. Magical hats is a card that you would just use to cheat out your monsters with destroying your gear town and your fortress. So it's a uh, real deal here, and. It runs two Sazanks kind of as that utility roll to send stuff to the graveyard. And Wild Man is third place as well. Sealed Tombs, Blue Eyes, the same deck as the one in the top two. Um, You've got three Dawn Knights. I think that's the only difference here. One Burst Stream of Destruction, Snipe Hunter build. Snipe Hunter is going to see a lot of play now with these uh, stones, of course. And there's going to be a Red Eye Stone, of course. So... uh, it's it's the card's back. Uh, Snipe Hunter was a card that saw a lot of play. Very frustrating card if you didn't roll the right dice, but seems pretty good now, uh, given that discarding the stones have some extra utility attached to it anyways. If you don't hit the, hit the card with your roll. And the tier list is in flux. Uh, Duel Link's meta tier list is in flux. There's so many new cards coming in at once. Um... This isn't going to be accurate by Monday, of course, when the new box comes out, but let's go over it anyways. Blue Eyes and Neos remain top tier. Um, I guess the tournaments that showed up this week, 
they haven't really changed much with in terms of the deck representation here. So these two remain the top tier. Ancient Gears are back. They're going getting into uh, second place, tier two, and it's been cited that they play around with a lot of things. Uh, flip monsters are very much in vogue right now. So you've got your Sazanks, you've got your um, Gale Lizards, you've got your Seer Karibo, yes, and Graveyard Things too. Graveyard Things, so Seer Karibo, Bacon Saver, A Change, or any of those cards. Ancient Gears will negate that during the battle phase. So um, it's a good deck to play right now. And it's a budget friendly deck. Not budget friendly deck, but if you bought it before in the past, it's something you could run out there. Tier 3 is the most crowded, where it's kind of confusing. You've got Amazonas there. Six Samurais are still there. Cyberdarks and Vampires have moved up. Kwaki Meru has been dropped to Tier 3. And then in the high potential, a bunch of different things. Buster Blader and Spellbooks are back. And Red Eyes Slash Dragon, which is the new Red Eyes deck, has been put on high potential as well. So, my own playing of... The story of behind the survey of the week is um, I was playing the Red Eyes deck, and of course when you're playing Red Eyes Slash, you have to combine uh, warriors. That's how you fuse Red Eyes Slash. You combine Red Eyes and a warrior. So um, in my own playing time, I found out that a lot of people were playing Amazon as Swordswoman. And I was, I was playing some weird version of Red Eyes Slash with equip cards. So I was using Things like Axe of Despair and um, the one, the P Power of the Ancients, I think it's called. But anyways, the Swordswomen were pretty much being destroyed and swinging into my monster, so I lost. So that kind of made me think about what playable warriors there are for uh, Red Eyes Slash Dragon. And I thought that Amazonist Swordswomen were limiting what types of warriors you could play in the deck because everyone was playing them. So that kind of inspired uh, the question of the week. Which of these cards should be limited or semi-limited in Duel Links? And I had Amazon of Swordswomen just for that reason because I thought they were just being put in almost every deck, it seems like, that could hit you for, you know, 1,500. And in a 4,000 life point format, that's quite a bit. I put Lava Golem, of course. Lava Golem is probably one of the worst defenders in Duel Links, and it's... It's very predictable, but there's nothing you can do about it because you're playing speed duel. So it kind of, you know, you're you're being you're playing an aggressive deck, but who wants to play a slow deck if you're playing on your phone? You know, it's, there's that dichotomy that you have to balance. So Love Golem is a huge offender. Both cards should be limited or not neither. So those were the options. 8% of people, only 8% said Amazon of Swordswomen should be limited. 34% said Lava Golem should be limited. 26% said both. And 32%, a third of respondents said neither. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Talk, Doug Demiduel says, Swordswomen has, Swordswomen has a lot of staying power and a ton of uses. It's a testament to how good and versatile the card is. Lava Golem is just dumb in speed duel format. I'm salty about it. So, yeah, I guess... This is pretty much the what most players agree on, that Swordswoman is okay, Lava Golem is not. Um, I don't really have an argument for that. I think I was a bit uh, I was a bit tilted by the Swordswoman in, when I was playing the Red Eye Slash deck, but I guess it has its place in Amazonas too. Grand Harrier says Swordswoman is fine. She's the secondary win con for some decks. If you hit her, you're hitting Amazonas again. Uh, when they're not, when they aren't overpowered, and you have to unlimit princess. To be fair, Lava Golem though is too efficient of free removal and should have a cost associated with it. Yeah, so the Amazonas deck isn't the best deck, but it's around, it's competitive, and hitting the Swordswoman would just kill the deck uh, with princess being nerfed, of course. And yeah, he he, he uh, Grand Harrier Matt. He agrees that Lava Golem is a problem. And especially with the with the way the slots are. We have three slots on the board. You're going to put two or three out. And the Lava Golem takes up space. And then you have trap cards. It's impossible to play around. And the 
when they gave us three lava golems, you knew it was going to happen. When you're playing a Weevil player, you know it's going to happen. It's just there's just a lot of writing on the wall to get rid of the card. So I'm all for putting it semi limited, limited in anything, get rid of it, restricted. I don't care. Lava golems bad for the game, and that is where I stand with that. Now we're going to talk about new cards for quite a bit. The first new cards came from the Red Eyes box, and the box was called Return of Red Eyes. I mean, not that's not a box, but it's a you know structured deck, I guess. And notably, this was just a regular structured deck, so they let you buy the first one of gems. I think I don't know if there's a difference between EX gem, I mean EX boxes, but this one's a bit cheaper, I think. And they give you one of, of some cards and two of some other cards. There's a mix of old cards and new cards here. We're just going to talk about the new cards. The first one's Red Eyes Retro Dragon. Level 4 Dragon Effect, 1700 Attack, 1600 Defense. If a level 4 or lower Red Eyes monster you control is destroyed by your opponent's attack or card effect and sent to the graveyard. While this card is in your hand, you can special summon this in defense position. If you do special summon as many of those destroyed monsters as possible in the same position they were when destroyed. You can tribute this card. You can normal summon one red eyes monster during your main phase this turn in addition to your normal summon or set. So, I personally did not know how to use this card. I I just tried to activate its effect and I tributed it for nothing. So don't, when you play this monster, don't just do that. And this is not a monster you try to play typically. You keep it in your hand. It's almost a Sir Karibo. So you wait for your monsters to get destroyed and then this brings them all back. It's kind of like um, Red Eye Spirit in the hand in a way, but even better because it summons itself out and you get your monster back. So it's definitely better to use to surprise your monster. Let's say you have two monsters. You let the first one get destroyed. You get the second one get destroyed, and then you activate this from the hand to get all three of them back. So that's a really strong play. Of course, there are situations when you just play this card, four star seventeen hundred, um, either to prevent breaking or if you're going for lethal, something like that. So it's a very useful card, and it's a card that you just have to keep in your hand. That's that's how you play the card, and I've definitely lost a lot of games not knowing how to use this new card, this new flashy card that I have. Red Eyes Arch Fiend of Lightning, level 6 Fiend Gemini, 2500 attack, 1200 defense because it is a summoned skull. This card is treated as a normal monster while face up on the field or in the graveyard. While this card is a normal monster on the field, you can normal summon it to have the effect. Uh, once per turn, you can destroy all face up monsters your opponent controls with defense lower than this attack. So, it's an interesting card, it's a control card. It can wipe the board each turn essentially. Wipe the board is subjective because 2,500 attack and blue eyes have 2,500 defense. So it's not going to kill blue eyes. It's not going to kill ancient gear wyvern. Uh, a bunch of other really big things, but it will kill 90% of things. And it is a red eyes card. It is an arch fiend. Um, notably, you can, is a Gemini monster. So you could kind of play... This alone in a Gemini deck. I don't know if that's advisable. Um, you may have other tools like the Evocateur Chevalier, for example. Or the the Witch. But um, that's that's just one route you can go with Supervise and Gemini Spark, all those cards. But here in the Red Eyes deck, it's typically a one of, I think. Um, you try to ditch it and then you bring it back with a Spirit or something and then you... Gemini summon and then use its ability. And it's it's got twenty five hundred attack, so it's a pretty good card. Um, it is it is a core card right now. I think in the Red Eyes deck with one of, but then it just has like a Gemini possibility as well. Red Eyes Toon Dragon, level seven Dragon Toon, twenty four hundred attack, two thousand defense. Cannot attack the turn it is summoned while you control Toon World. And your opponent controls no Toon Monsters. This card can attack directly. Once per turn, you can special summon one Toon Monster from your hand, except for Red-Eyes Toon Dragon, ignoring its summoning conditions. So this card brought Toons back, actually. You're seeing a lot of them on the Legends Ladder, at least. And 2400 attack can attack directly, and it brings a monster off onto the field. Once you have the um, field spell on, it's pretty good, because this card can't be destroyed. 
very good card. Um, they give you two in a box too, so you can just buy the box twice and you have a full complement of these cards if you're playing tunes. And the card that makes this whole thing work is Red Eyes Fusion. Normal spell, fusion summon one fusion monster that lists a Red Eyes monster as material from your extra deck. Using monsters from your hand, deck, or field as fusion materials, if you do, its same name becomes Red Eyes Black Dragon. You can add normal or special summon other monsters that turn you activate this card. You can only activate one per turn. So, Neos Fusion was just released, and it's very good just because it can summon from the deck. It can use the materials from the deck, and that was pretty much the Achilles heel of fusions. You had It was always situational because you had to have them on the hand or board. And now using it from the deck makes it very good. This does the same thing, except this card is a lot worse. This card does not protect. Uh, Neos Fusion can be banished from the graveyard to protect. This does not... This, once this is in the graveyard, it doesn't do anything. Secondly, Red Eyes only have one playable fusion monster. Um, the Elemental Heroes they have one for each attribute, it seems. This one... You're just playing Red Eye Slash. That's all it is. Uh, because the only two monsters they have are Black Skull Dragon and Black Meteor Dragon. Those are just beat sticks. That's all they are. So this is... That's the only playable card. Um, the good thing about it is Red Eyes search very well. So you could use Red Eyes Insight to get this card, for example. So they have multiple ways of getting this card right away. So you could get a faster play. I guess they brick less. That's one way of putting it. But I think to play Red Eyes optimally, you definitely need three of these. So you have to buy the box three times. And that's something I haven't done. Maybe that's why I'm losing all my games. So, um, yeah, it's it's pretty good for what it is. Not Neo Fusion, but pretty good. Another pretty good card is Return of the Red Eyes. It's a trap card, continuous. If you control a Red Eyes monster except for Red Eyes Black Chick, you can target one normal monster in your graveyard, special summon it. If this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card effect and sent to the graveyard, target one red eyes monster in your graveyard except for red eyes black check, summon it. You can use this effect once per turn. So this is a continuous version of red eyes spirit. And uh, the downside is it's situational in that you need another monster to use its ability. But that, but that's not a... It's, it's a it fools you sometimes. Sometimes you think you could save yourself by activating this, but then you have no monsters, so... It's of course it's learning how to play the card, of course. And right now what decks do is they typically run two spirits and one of these. So this is kind of the third spirit. Um again, this is a core monster in the deck. And the last new card is Beckoned by the World Chalice, which is just a vanilla normal monster. Warrior eighteen hundred tax zero defense. This is only put here because it's a warrior, so they kind of but a few other warriors here, Puppet King and Disciple of the Forbidden Spell. Yeah, I don't know why Puppet King's there, but the Beckons by the World Chalice is interesting because it kind of, um, it, uh, it, um, foreshadows crawlers, and crawlers come into the next box, which is kind of weird, but that's the only thing that's interesting about that card, I don't see anything else. In terms of the PvE event this week, which we're getting new cards, Tabletop RPG Monster World is happening right now. And this is your chance to unlock Tristan if you're a new player to the game. So it's definitely a good idea to get him. Even though his decks, his skills never really saw play, I really um, expected that Tristan Vampire deck to get you 2,000 life points with something, but it never really came to anything. And... Um, there's three new cards here, one new dual skill, and there are improvements this time around that make it a lot better. Um, one thing, you can auto-duel the, the dice battles. And the tra I've always found the transitions in the dice battles being really slow. Of course, I'm in New York where I take the train to work, and when you're cutting out between stops, it gets really annoying, and you have to time it out, and then the dice battles take forever. These auto-duels definitely make a huge difference. And... There are a bunch of other improvements as well. I forget what, but it makes it a lot easier to get through without using all your potions, of course. So this is a vast improvement, and it's a great way to get gems, of course. You're not getting a ton of gems, but you're getting gems. And 
three new cards to talk about. First one's Ghost Ship, level 5 Fiend, Light Fiend. 1900 attack, 1000 defense. Cannot be normal, summoned, or set. Must be special summoned from your hand by banishing one light monster from your graveyard. So, I read this card wrong. It's a light fiend. I thought it was a dark fiend. I guess that's what the difference is. And, yeah, I guess... I thought you could do something with light and dark because it's, you know, it's a light. You banish a light to get a dark out, but it's not that way. Yeah, I don't really know what the use of this card is now. Um, <laughs> I guess, um, Fabled's are light fiends, I guess. I don't know. This card, this card being dark was much better than it being light, and I thought you could do something with light and dark, but not anymore. This is how not reading a card before you do the show notes and uh yeah yaksha level four fairy spirit 1900 attack 1500 defense cannot be special summoned during the end phase of this turn when this is normal summoned or flipped face up return to the hand when this card is normal summoned or flipped face up target one spar trap your opponent controls return that target to the hand so spirits haven't really seen play forever it's a level four 1900 it's pretty good It can hard remove a spell trap each turn. Of course, if you're playing spirits, you want those cards. There's a continuous card that keeps it on the field. I forget what it's called, but you want those types of cards. Otherwise, this is a card that can remove a spell or trap each turn, which is pretty good against a controlled deck because they're not going to really ramp up the attack unless they're playing a Nephis-style deck. So... This could be this could be okay, but of course it's a spirit and you lose the board position, which is huge, and that's ultimately not worth playing. Uh Skull Dog Moran is a level four, thirteen fifty two thousand. The only quibble I have with this card is a beast and it's like a zombie dog, so it should be a zombie and it's a beast. That's what it is. And let's see. There's also a new Bakora skill called Zork Appears. Roll a six-sided die. If the result is less than the ter- current turn count, play one Dark Master Zork from your hand. The skill can only be used once per duel. I think the skill would be busted if uh, Zork was played from the deck. A lot of things play from the deck, so I was thinking it was like that, but only plays from the hand. So that makes this card okay. Of course, um, if you're pl- if you're going first, it's better to go second with the skill. Because you got to turn two, four, and six, and obviously the dice have a chance to be lower with a bigger number, so it's more of a fun skill, and it's limited by the situational nature of Dark Master Zork being in the hand. Now it's time to talk about the new upcoming box, Blazing Rose, and. You know, this card, this this box gets attention for having Black Rose Dragon finally. And to be honest with you, with time constraints, I didn't get to look at every card. I only looked at the SRs and URs. And I, this is probably one of the best boxes I've seen in a while, based on just the URs and SRs. Additionally, this box doesn't really bring back old archetypes and has new ones. A lot of new archetypes I've never seen before myself. And it does help Red Eyes, I guess. So I have a lot of incentive to buy this box. This is a, this is probably a box I would even spend money on. And that's a huge uh, commitment for me. So let's get into the URs and SRs next week. I'm going to go over more of the R's and N's and more of the archetypes. And we'll probably have a better idea of what to do with these cards by then. But right now, here's a first impression of the URs and SRs in this box. Let's get to it. First card, of course, is Black Rose Dragon. It keys is monster. Level 7, Dragon Synchro, no tuning requirements, 2400 attack, 1800 defense. When this card is Synchro Summoned, you can destroy all cards on the field. Once per turn, you can banish one plant monster from your graveyard. Target one defense position monster your opponent controls. Change that target to face-up attack. And if you do, its attack becomes zero until the end of this turn. So, this actually... I mean, this card wasn't released until now because it has a nuke ability, 
And with three copies of this, you can nuke the field three times. Um, a secondary ability, Banish from Plant Monster, can be done with Keys' skill. Dark Verger is in the graveyard, so um, I see a lot of play potential here. Uh, Synchron seem to be the way to do it. They have many ways of cheating this out on the board. Of course, you're, when you're nuking the board, you have to consider that you're destroying this Black Rose Dragon with 2400 tech as well. So it's best used... It, it's it's a card you don't want to use recklessly, I guess. You don't want to use it when your opponent has one face-down card. So there's definitely a thought process to playing the Black Rose Dragon. But um, I think it's... I mean, the ability to nuke the field three times just for Synchro Summoning is huge on its own. So definitely a card that is well worth it. Next card is Vermilion Dragon Mech. Level 9 Machine Synchro. No tuning requirements, 2700 tech, 1800 defense. Once per turn, you can banish one tuner from your hand, field, or graveyard, then target one card on the field and destroy it. If this card is synch if this synchro summoned card is destroyed by card effect and sent to the graveyard, target one of your banished tuners, add it to your hand. This is not too impressive in my opinion. It's a level 9 though, so level 9 synchros are typically Gigantic Castle, and Mistworm. Those are the two most seen cards. And it works okay in Synchrons, I think. It, the tuners are recycled a lot. You could just destroy them and they bring themselves back. Um, but the attack isn't very impressive. 2700, that does not get over any of the 3000 attack monsters. Of course, this is a control card. You could target any card on the field and destroy it. But I think the package is just not enough. Um, a lot of cards get over destruction, of course. They have to be sent to the graveyard or banished. This does not do that. The attack isn't amazing, and it's 9 stars. This just seems like you are filler. I don't see a ton of possibility, but of course it's level 9. So if your deck fits level 9s, and this is better than Mistworm, then go for it. Black Metal Dragon. Level 1 Dragon, 600-600. You can target one red eyes monster you control. Equip this monster from your hand or field to that target. Gain 600 attack. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one red eyes card from your deck to your hand. So, it's a bit of like a union monster. Um, it's a delayed tutor for any red eyes card. And it's card, this card won't be banished typically. Typically, um, They'll use Cosmic Cyclone on a back row card. This will get destroyed, or the monster gets banished. This just goes to the graveyard. So you're pretty much guaranteed a tutor on a Red Eyes card. Otherwise, it's just like an equip spell of 600 attack. Sometimes the attack matters. Um, Red Eyes is typically lower, so they're going to be fighting for the attack to fight the Blue Eyes. I see some play possibility, and of course it gets any Red Eyes card. It's not just the spell. It's not just the monster. It gets any card. So I think that will warrant some play. It's not a card I see three of, of course. It might just be a card you'll see one of in a Red Eyes deck. But it's it's good, but it doesn't it doesn't blow you away, I think. It's a card that... Like, like Red Eyes are really good searchers, and then there's this clunky 600 attack union guy that is around. So that's, that's the way I see it. But if, I, I could be wrong in... Could see a lot of play. Next card up is Deus X Crawler. Level 9 Insect with a flip effect. 2,000 attack, 3,000 defense. When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets this face down monster, you can quick effect, change this card to face up defense, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. After this card was flipped face up, while it is in the monster zone, negate all monster's effects activated on your opponent's field. If this card in the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can add from your deck to your hand one level 9 monster with a different original type or attribute than this card. You can use this effect once per turn. A lot of stuff going on here. So, it's a 2 tribute set monster. It's a card you want to play face down. So there it is. Um, and based on the cards you use in Duel Links, it's best against a card like Treacherous Trap Hole. That's typically a card you would use on something face down sometimes. If it's a huge threat, they don't want to hit into it. Otherwise, they'll get attacked. They'll hit 3,000 defense. Probably will repel the attack. And it will negate all of your monsters, uh, opponent's monster's effects. 
which is actually very good against Amazon as Swordswoman. So this is this is a card that uh, I I like. When it gets destroyed, you get a level nine card. That's not very useful in Duel Links. There's only a few cards that fit that, and then it's gonna be some other archetype. This is a control card that's kind of weird. It. It's a crawler, so crawlers have to have a way of getting this on the board, uh, either for a tribute summon or just to cheat this on the field. If you cheat this on the field, it'll be really good, though. I don't know what to think about this card. Crawler Spine, level 2 Insect, 300 attack, 2100 defense, flip effect, you can target one monster on the field, destroy it. If this card on... If this face-up card in its owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon two crawlers with different names from your deck in face-up, face-down defense, except for Crawler Spine. You can only use each effect of Crawler Spine once per turn. So this is one of the workers of Crawlers. There's two workers. The other one's an SR. Um, this is hard removal on a flip on a monster. Of course, in the meta right now, you want to send to the graveyard, and this destroys. It's not sent to the graveyard, but not everything has protection, so it's okay. It's got 2100 defense, and the bad part is its situational ability. Um, it has to leave the field face up because of an opponent's card effect. So it's a very situational thing where they know this crawler is going to get two things from your deck, and they're not going to target it. I guess it protects against a Black Rose Dragon if they know it's here and they're going to blow up the board, but they don't want to get you extra stuff on the board. So I guess it protects against a nuke like that. But against a controllable ability, it your opponent's probably going to dodge it most of the time, right? If they see it face up. Next card is one of the better, one of the more exciting cards for many reasons. World Dragacy, World Legacy, World Armor. Level 7, Dark Machine, 2500 attack, 2500 defense. When this card is flipped, when a monster is flipped summoned, you can special summon this from your hand. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. If this normal summoned or set card is on the field, you can quick effect. You can target one face up opponent's monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, return both that monster and this card to the hand. You can use each effect once per turn. So this card, I read it wrong, I think. Um, it comes out for free when a flip summon happens. So there's a bunch of flip monsters like the crawlers. Um, not even a flip effect. That's be like a flip summon. So you have to do it yourself. It's not a flip up. Maybe Sazank. Sazank works with it okay. But it's Better ability comes when it's normal or... Okay, it actually works. Never mind. Um, so you get to tutor the World Legacy cards. So probably another one of these World Armor cards. Um, if it's normal summons are set, though, it's a better ability. You can target your opponent's monster and return that special summoned monster. So it's a counter to any extra deck card. It um, Any synchro monster, any fusion monster, and it serves to waste their opponent's resources. So... Um, bouncing the card to the extra deck. You make them use more resources. Um, and they could eventually waste their turn. I thought this card would work if it was special summoned and then it has that ability, but apparently this ability only works when it's normal summoned or set to the field. So this quick effect ability is the main draw of the card. Of course, it is... 25, a free 2500, 2500 when a flip summon does happen. So it's pretty good there as well. I think this card, see if it was, I thought it was busted in that, you know, it has that ability to, to bounce stuff the whole time. But I think this still makes it into the extra deck in tournament formats just to counter anything from the extra deck. And extra deck plays are, like fusions are pretty much the best thing in Duel Links right now with... Synchro is being pretty good as well, so I think this card sees a lot of play, and I think this could be one of the best cards in this set, actually. Keeper of the Shrine, level 4 Dragon, uh, 0 attack, 2100 defense. This card can be treated as 2 tributes for the tribute summon of a dragon monster. When this card in your is in your hand or graveyard, if a face of dragon monster 
on the field except for Keeper of the Shrine is sent to the graveyard by card effect or by battle. You can special summon this card. Then, if that monster sent to the graveyard is a normal monster, you can add one dragon-type normal monster from your graveyard to your hand. You can use this effect once per turn. So this is an effigy card. It counts as two tributes for the tribute summon of a dragon monster, and that's tribute summoning. There's It comes back. When you lose your monster, this comes back from the graveyard, so you can do it again next turn. And then there's extra synergy for your red eyes and blue eyes. Normal dragons are are received again. You get them back from a graveyard. The problem with this card, of course, is that the blue eyes and red eyes re- re- uh, revolve on special summons, so they use their um, their different plays of getting blue eyes or red eyes onto the field. And this card becomes moot because who's tribute summoning? Tribute summoning, anyways. Um, but this is a very good card otherwise. Other other than the fact that Blue Eyes and Red Eyes special summon very well, this is very good for any other dragon card. Um, especially if you can find a normal dragon that's not Blue Eyes or Red Eyes, but I don't know if they're worth playing at all. Maybe some Gemini monster. There's that Gemini uh, Arc Storm dragon or Dark Storm dragon, I forgot what it's called, but it's a Gemini monster that was pretty good. Uh, maybe, maybe you can see his play. This card is pretty good, but Blue Eyes and Red Eyes are just dominating the field right now. Miracle Fertilizer, Continuous Spell. Once per turn, you can target one plant monster in your graveyard. Special summon that target. You cannot normal summon or set during the turn. You special summon with this effect. If a monster is special summoned by this effect, leaves the field, destroy this card. So this is this is a card for big plants. I think big plants are coming back because there's a new monster in this set that's a big plant. So I don't know if they're coming back, but this is for them and plants haven't plants were big with sylvans and sylvans wouldn't really take advantage of a card like miracle fertilizer aromas could also do it so plants aren't being played a ton uh, big plants could be a thing with giga plant too giga plant is a gemini monster that brings stuff back from the graveyard too so maybe it's good this is either redundant or you could use giga plant or they're all something that doesn't really work and finally, Metaphys Dimension. It's a continuous trap. If your opponent special summons a monster, except during the damage step, you can target one of your banished Metaphys monsters, special summon it, but banish it during the end phase of the next turn. If your other Metaphys card in the owner's possession is banished, while this card is already face up in the spell or trap zone, target one card your opponent controls and banish it. You can use each effect once per turn. So this is a new archetype I don't know anything about. It does self banish from what I've read. And this is a one-for-one one banish. So you banish your monster, you banish theirs. Yours comes back, there doesn't. Hey, this card... This this is pretty good. Not a lot of cards uh, benefit from being banished. The only one I see is like Giant Rex. And no one's really playing dinosaurs anymore. So it's going to be a devastating control counter. Uh, I'll have to see what other Metaphys cards are in this box. I have not seen them. But this seems... You know, if the Metaphys archetype is a thing, this is a card you need a lot of. So That's something. Now it's time to talk about the SRs. And of course, in a box like this, SRs, there are two of in each set. The URs mentioned previously, there are only one. Blackstone of Legend, level 1, dragon, 0 attack and defense. You can tribute this card, special summon 1 level 7 or lower red-eyes monster from your deck, except for red-eyes black chick. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target one level 7 or lower Red Eyes monster in your graveyard. And except for Red Eyes Black Chick, shuffle it into the deck. If you do, add this card to your hand. You can use this effect once per turn and only once that turn. So, first ability is pretty good. Um, but it could be discard fodder, like like how we saw um, in the tournament with the White Stone of Ancients for Snipe Hunter. I think that's the best card. Best way to use this card. Snipe Hunter or even the card like Dark Core, which banishes monsters. And then you could use the Recycle ability. Um, I don't know if this is good enough to see play, but I think this works very well with Snipe Hunter. And that might be a sub-archetype of Red Eyes that is better than the current version. I don't know. Um, but getting an extra toy to do so isn't a bad thing. So this only helps the archetype. Red-Eyes Baby Dragon, level 3 Dragon, 1200 attack, 700 defense. 
When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can tar special summon one level 7 or a lower Red Ice Monster from your deck. If you do, equip this card from the graveyard to it. It gains 300 attack. If this card is sent to the graveyard while equipped to the monster, you can add one level 1 Dragon Monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So this is like a Cyber Dark Cannon. I think it lets the Red Eyes... Uh, it has the like special summon synergy and tutor synergy. It could also work in Cyber Darks too. Um, you know, they have like the the dragons that fuse with the monsters. So it's it's an attachment for our Cyber Dark too. It, it has a few different uses, but typically, I don't think it's good enough to fit in the regular Red Eyes deck, but it could be a Cyber Dark card. Metaphys Daedalus, level 7 Worm, 2600 attack, 1500 defense. When this card is special summoned by the effect of a Metaphys monster, you can banish all their face-up special summoned monsters on the field. If this card is banished during the standby phase of the next turn, you can shuffle this banished card into the deck. Banish one Metaphys card from your deck, except for Daedalus. So, this first ability is really good. It's a lot better than the Black Rose Dragon, because you could banish all face-up special summoned monsters, and with the way the meta is, it's possible all of your opponent's monsters are special summoned. So banishing all of them will be a de devastating blow. Of course, it depends what this archetype looks like. I can't imagine it being too OP and broken here, so I like to temper my expectations, but you know, it has the name Daedalus, which, which um, was probably one of the best archetypes in the first box of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Duel Links, so that uh, play with Mako Tsunami was huge. So this card could be huge again. It could be too clunky, but there's a chance it could be broken when you banish a lot of stuff at once. Crawler Axon, level 2 Insect, 500 attack, 1800 defense, flip effect, target one spot or trap on the field, destroy it. If this face-up card in your opponent's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, special summon two Crawler Monsters with different names from your deck and face down defense except for Crawler Axon. This is the companion card to Crawler Spine, except it hits Spar Trap. Uh, same thing, um, pretty good card, except it has that situational thing where it's face up and has to leave the field. Your opponent is, should be smart enough to not do that, so that is the problem with this card as well. Here's a very interesting card, Sub-Terror Behemoth Umastrix. Level 7 Reptile, 2000 Attack, 27 Defense. Flip effect, you can target one monster your opponent controls and banish it. Um, you can use this effect once per turn. When a face-up monster you control is flipped face down, if you control no face-up monsters, you can special summon this from the hand in defense mode. Once per turn, change this card to face down defense. So we've seen flip and send to the graveyard, which is very good right now, but I think this is better. Flip and banish, uh, because... Cards that are banished typically can't be gotten again, and sends the graveyard to get it back. So I think this sees a lot of play. It it's kind of like this this archetype reminds me of Gearges, in that they were on, constantly flipped and flipped up and down and stuff, and those just destroyed things. This one banishes, so it's very good. A level seven though, but it does cheat itself out if you control no face up monsters. I think this could be something. This this could be something. Flip and Banish sounds very good. Rose Paladin, level 4, Warrior, 1800, attack, 200, defense. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can tribute this and special summon one plant from your hand or deck in defense mode. You can send this card from your hand to the graveyard, add one level 7 or higher plant monster from your deck to your hand. You can use this effect once per turn. It's a, it's a generic 4-star beater, but it has big plant synergies. Um, You can cheat out one from your hand or deck, and the deck is the big thing. You could you could cheat out one of those really big plants, or you could get a giga plant out. And it's also a searcher. So this card this card could make plants a thing. It's very good. Here's one of the plants, Titanial, Princess of Camellias, level eight wind plant, twenty eight hundred attacks, twenty six hundred defense. During either player's turn, when a card or effect that targets a card on the field is activated, you can tribute one face up plant monster and negate the activation if you do destroy it. So, I think the other two, the other plants like Tylia and um, Marinha are in, are in the game already. There's a few other ones, but um, this one's pretty useful. It can negate activations and destroy 
uh, targets. Um, we've we've been seeing this type of thing where they negate and destroy a targeted thing. It's pretty good actually, and they're pretty strong. If you add beat down to it, you could have something here. I'm not saying it's going to be top tier or anything, but it could be something. This card, this next card is actually called Cockadoodle Do. Level 5 Winged Beast Tuner. It's a chicken, 1600 attack, 2000 defense. If there are no monsters on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand as a level 3. If your opponent controls a monster and you control no cards, you can special summon this as a level 4. If this face of card would leave the field, banish it instead. This, this card is a level modulating tuner. It will be a 3 or 4. In rare instances, it will be a 5. I think this was, this um this could be ramp. It it actually works very well with a card called Troposphere, and Troposphere is in Duel Links, and it's one of those um Wild Heart or uh, Ten Kabito Shen cards, except that's twenty four hundred attack. So that could be the sneaky use for this card. You could special summon this and then play Troposphere, and that's the game. You put some equipped spells on Troposphere, and that's the game. Um, I think this is good enough to see play somewhere. It's a it's a fast tuner, and fast tuners do make their way onto the field. This could just be for Troposphere. I think that's the best play for this card, actually. Boogie Trap is a normal spell. Discard two cards, target one trap in your graveyard, set that target. It can be activated this turn. You can only activate one Boogie Trap per turn. So this big cost for getting a trap card to use again. And that makes me think of Treacherous Trap Hole to clear a lot of stuff on the board. If you're playing... Endless Trap Hell, there's no use for a card like this, but um, you can even discard a trap that just has a discard cost and just play that card. So I think it's for Treacherous Trap Hole, really. Sub Terror Final Battle Trap Card. Activate one of these effects. Also, after that, set this card face down instead of sending it to the graveyard. Change one set Sub Terror Monster on the field to face up attack or defense. Change one face up Sub Terror Monster on the field to face down defense. Attack and defense of one sub-terror monster on the field become equal to its combined original attack and defense until the end of the turn. This turn, activated effects of sub-terror monsters cannot be negated. So this card makes the whole thing work. Um, it does anything you want. You pick four things for your sub-terror. It's reusable. So as long as they don't destroy it and banish it. It's just continuous banish for your Umastrix. I think these cards being SRs make them the budget choice. You get three of these, three of those. Throw in some other thing. This is an OP archetype. It even lets them one turn kill. It makes your Umistrix have 4,700 attack. This is very good. Finally, the last SR is Liberty at last. Trap card. When a, nor when a monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to graveyard, target two face up monsters on the field, shuffle them into the deck. So... With Wall of D being back, it makes it seem like battle phase only traps are back. And this is a battle phase only trap. You have to have something destroyed, and then you bounce two cards to the deck. It's hard removal for two cards. It kind of reminds me of uh, Dual Wield. I think this this is pretty good. It gets around uh, Neos Fusion, of course, so that's something. Um, bouncing is a thing now with Sent to the Graveyard. Sent to the hand. This could see play, actually. I think this is pretty good, too. So this overall package, I really like. I like the SRs a lot more than yours, I think. But the yours have some pretty good cards, too. I'm excited to see these other cards. I did not even look at the R's and N's, but these are you know whole new archetypes here. I'm going to check out these cards for next week. Uh, and I definitely will be buying this box. I, I rarely say that, but I really like this box. And... I will probably spend some money on the box. So, um, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. If, if you if you have other opinions on this box, let me know what you think. That is it for the card reveals this week. Um, now Doug Dimmendul is here with his casual deck of the week. This week he is talking about Beatdown, Dark Lords. Of course, Dark Lords were from the last mini box. They kind of made it into the... Uh, Duelings meta potential tier list, but then they didn't really make it past that. But if you like playing really big monsters, uh, special summoning big monsters, playing beatdown, having really strong guys and girls, this is the deck for you. So here is Doug Dimmon Duel's casual deck of the week 
with Dark Lords. Hey there, this is Doug Dimadul with Doug's Casual Deck of the Week. This week, I wanted to talk about a nice build revolving around Dark Lords. Uh, this is one of the newest archetypes that was introduced in the recent mini box. These are just the perfect types of cards to run with the skill Beatdown. So whether you're using Seto Kaiba or if you're using Jack Atlas, any character that has Beatdown, uh, that's the skill that you want to run with this deck. So uh, just to dive into how I built my deck, I do run the three copies of Dark Lord uh, Ikchel. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's a level 10 fairy, 2500 attack, 2900 defense. You can discard this card and one Dark Lord card and draw two cards. During either play turn you can pay a thousand life points then target one dark lord spell or trap card in your graveyard and apply that target's effect then shuffle that target into the deck you can only activate this effect once per turn you can only special summon dark lord it chills once per turn as well so really good card this gets a lot of your spells and traps into the graveyard and the reason why that's so important is because in a meta that revolves significantly around having um having six samurais and having the ability to negate spell and traps you're able to get the benefits of your spells and traps without actually having to play them because you're going to pay the 1,000 life points to hopefully activate one of your two uh, main Dark Lord spells or traps and get the full benefit without actually having to play that spell or trap. So uh, that's why this deck works so well right now in a meta where everybody's trying to negate spells and traps using uh, six samurais and also having just some big old beat sticks. So moving on to the next uh, important card is I run three copies of Dark Lord Nastin. It is a level 7 fairy, 2600 attack, 2600 defense. You can discard two other Dark Lord cards to special summon this card from your hand. During either player's turn, you could pay a thousand life points, then target one Dark Lord spell or trap card, apply that effect, shuffle into the deck. It's the same type of thing. You can only special summon Dark Lord Nastins once per turn. So again, very similar effect, but this allows you to dump a lot of the cards from your hand into your graveyard to set yourself up for future plays. So the next one I run three copies of is Dark Lord Tezcatlipacola. Goodness, that is a hard one to pronounce. Um, but yeah, Dark Lord Tez. That's what I think you'll see a lot of people calling it that. Level 9 fairy, 2800 attack, 2100 defense. If a Dark Lord monster you control would be destroyed by battle or card effects, you could discard this card instead. So this is one you want to keep in your hand. During either player's uh, turn, you can uh, you know pay the 1,000 life points, then target one Dark Lord, spell a trap card in your graveyard, shuffle into the deck, and apply the effect. So overall, this is a very good multifaceted card. That's why you want to run three copies of it. It's only a normal uh, rarity. So it should be real easy to get uh, get a hold of. And then to round things out, I run those three copies of Dark Lord Uko back. It's a level 3 fairy, 700 attack, 1000 defense. If this card is normal or special summon, you can send one Dark Lord card from your deck to the graveyard. You can only use this effect of Dark Lord Uko back once per turn. So this allows you to drop maybe one of your spells or traps. Maybe it'll allow you to drop one of your uh, your other Dark Lord monsters uh, into the graveyard for a, a special summon or anything like that. And you could go into some pretty decent plays. So finally, then I run the three copies of Dark Lord Desire. It is a level 10 uh, monster. It... Uh, you cannot be special summoned. Now, it's got 3,000 attack and 2,800 defense. Um, but yeah, it cannot be special summoned. You could tribute the, you could tribute summon this card by only tributing one fairy-type monster. And seeing as all your Dark Lord monsters are fairy, that works out perfectly. Uh, you could uh, Once per turn, you could target one monster your opponent controls. Whether it's face-up or face-down, it doesn't matter. And this card loses exactly 1,000 attack. And if it does, send that target to the graveyard. So this is really powerful because there's a lot of destruction and banishing prevention and stuff like that right now in the current meta but what this one does is it requires your opponent to then send that card to the graveyard not destroy not anything like that so it bypasses a lot of those uh, protection effects that keep cards from being destroyed so you could run one copy or two copies i run two copies of dark lord desire 
It is one of the SRs, so you got to go through the box a few times to get it. Same thing with Dark Lord Ixchel. Uh, same thing. It's, uh, you know, you're going to have to invest a little bit into this new box. Now, as for the spells and traps, these play a huge impact on how you're able to, to effectively use this deck. Uh, Dark Lord Contact is a spell where you special summon one Dark Lord monster from your graveyard in defense position. You can only activate one Dark Lord Contact per turn. And then you have the trap card, the Sanctified Dark Lord. It's where you send one Dark Lord monster from your hand or face up from your field to the graveyard, negate the effects of one effect monster on the field until the end of this turn, and if you do, gain life points equal to its attack. You can only activate one the Sanctified Dark Lord per turn. So having these cards sitting in your graveyard, it just it's really what you want to do because... A lot of your stuff, whether it's Dark Lord Tez, Dark Lord Nastin, uh, Dark Lord Ixchel, all of their effects then are able to you know take a thousand life points and then target a card from your uh, you know any of these Dark Lord spells or traps from your graveyard and apply their effect. So the fact that you're using Sanctified Dark Lord, you could actually use it on the most powerful monster on the field at the end of your turn, even if it's one of your own, negate its effect, and in the process, you can get a nice 3,000 uh, boost to your life points to then uh, later on activate their, you know, pay a 1,000 life point effects later on. So um, having that ability to regain some of your life points that you could use in a later turn, um, that's a very powerful effect on its own. And also using the Sanctified Dark Lord as a way to negate some of the effects from, like, Ubel, or if there's another powerful monster on the field that has a good effect, um, yeah, you're able to then negate that effect pretty handily. So overall, uh, this deck just, it puts in some serious work. Now, there, there's some weaknesses. It's very limited as to, you know, what effects you can and can't use. There's other ways you could try and spice this deck up, but, um... I've had some pretty good luck with this on the ladder, let alone, you know, casual. This deck is a lot of fun to play, but um, on the ladder, this deck does match up pretty well against um, against those six samurai decks. So uh, definitely give this one a shot and see how you like it. I think you'll uh, think you'll enjoy playing with this one. Um, it's I wouldn't say meta breaking, but it does have some very good matchups in the meta right now. So uh, if you do get a chance to play it, I, I definitely recommend it. So anyway, that's it for this week's uh, Casual Deck of the Week. Uh, I'm Doug Dibbenul, and I will see you next time. Take care. All right, thanks, Doug. And you can check out Doug at Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Talk on Twitter, and he'll be on this segment every week with a new exciting build. So, upcoming news for the rest of the month, mid-May, Mark of the Dark Signer. Um, I think Kalen Kessler is the is the person that is you know involved in this. So, I don't know anything about those cards, but they are the Infernity cards. Late May, the Duel Links World Championship qualifiers. So the qualifiers before the finals. Exciting stuff for esports. And it'll be crazy to see what uh, decks, uh, what cards are released since then. So this new Black Rose Dragon thing is coming out. Red Eyes are here. Are they going to pause before that happens? I don't know. This could be the last box we see for a little bit. It's very possible for a whole month. A whole month, this could be the last box. So it's definitely something to dive into. Dual Quest is coming back. Uh, Dual Quest seems to be a thing that's every late month thing now, man. I'm not really complaining. It's free stuff. And Dual Room updates, of course. And uh, probably you know next week, by next week, we'll have the updates for the next month. So I'm actually very excited about uh, the prospect of, and the future of Dual Links. Um, I personally am tired of the meta, the some of the decks I'm seeing in the meta, but hopefully this new box... I think this new box could completely shift things, and um, I'm really hoping for the best with this new box. And, of course, I didn't even see the R's and N's yet, so I'm you know, raving about this. So that is it for uh, this week in podcast. So thank you very much for tuning in. Subscribe and listen to this podcast anywhere you are. iTunes, Stitcher, Overcast, CastBox, Spotify, anywhere. Thanks for the support. Check out the podcast and more at the website, thedualassessment.wordpress.com. Email me, thedualassessment at gmail.com, or better yet, 
Interact on Twitter, dual underscore assessment, or my own account at Green Ranger CCG. So this time next week, we'll have all these new cards to play with, and they'll be pretty fun. We'll have lots to talk about. All right, thanks, and I'll see you then.